Representative I mean, from, I'm sorry, I don't oh, know. Sorry, we are out of time. The representative from Minnesota, Ms. Omar, is recognized for five minutes. It's good to see you again, uh, Secretary Sue. Um, I uh, wanted uh, to talk a little bit about um, the, the child labor violations that are soaring, um, that we're seeing uh, throughout the country. We are also seeing some states rolling back labor protections for minors from Florida to Iowa. Republican lawmakers have been weakening child labor laws. Uh, could you provide update on the interagency task force on child labor and how the Department of Labor is following up on potential hotspots? Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, the, the Department of Labor has been very hard at work trying to combat the scourge of child labor. Um, one of the reasons so much attention is being paid to it today is that we have uncovered some really horrific cases. Uh, and there's just no mistaking that these are both you know, really young children, some of them working the night shift um, under very, very hazardous uh, 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 situations, uh, as young as 13-year-old uh, working on the kill floor using toxic chemicals uh, and working and losing limbs and their lives. And so last year, the last fiscal year, the Department of Labor assessed the most penalties that we have ever assessed uh, uh, for, uh, under child labor laws. We also lead an interagency task force that you mentioned um, in order to make sure that all of government is working together on the various pieces that it will take to keep children safe, to um, engage with all the other parties that might be helpful to us uh, as we try to identify mm -hmm. these cases, and to hold employers accountable who engage in this practice in such blatant disregard of the law. So that when, when task force continues to, to work together to uh, identify gaps and to, and, and, and to try to make sure that we are putting a stop to this practice. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. The Bureau of International Labor Affairs plays an essential role in leveling the playing field for all workers. ILAP helps enforce our trade commitments and strengthens compliance with labor standards. Could you um, explain how the interests and priorities of workers across the globe are interconnected? And how should we be thinking about the plight of workers in Mexico, for example, as it relates to the plight of workers here in the United States? And what would it mean if Republicans were successful in slashing the budget for ILAP? Thank you very if, much. If you can be as precise as possible, I've got one more yes. question. So the well-being of workers in this country uh, is tied to the well-being of workers in other countries. Um, when we have the ability for uh, um, you know, to, to create a race to the bottom in which uh, all workers are vulnerable to exploitation and abuse, it's not good for, for any worker. Um, through our iLab, we um, both produce reports and advocate to make sure that, for example, prohibitions against goods made through forced labor um, from coming into this country are enforced. We work closely with, uh, with our partners at the Department of Homeland Security on that. In terms of Mexico, there's the USMCA, the US-Mexico-Canada Agreement, and we, are through ILAB, play a role in making sure that those provisions are enforced and that working people in Mexico also have a full and fair right to join a, a union of their choice. Uh, and, 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 and we believe that that will improve uh, not just working conditions for workers in Mexico, but also the competitive disadvantage that working people in the US have to face when we don't uh, ensure that workers across the globe are protected. Yeah, thank you, I commend you for that work. I'm also proud of the work that the Biden administration and congressional Democrats um, did in enacting uh, in the American Rescue Plan to save many multi-employer pensions. Um, actually, in, in my district, the Twin Cities Bakery Drivers Pension Plan uh, was one that benefited from it. 1,075 1, pensions were saved. What would happen to my constituents, to businesses, and to employees across the nation if we did not address the multi-employer pension plan? I mean, this is so important. This is about basic security in retirement. This is about working people who have saved and are relying on having their retirement savings so that they can um, you know, stop working at the end of a career and know that they can continue to, uh, uh, to live with security. 
Um, the uh, multi-employer pension fund um, uh, s saving that, that, uh, that this Congress passed and the President signed into law helps to make sure that those individuals in those funds actually get the retirement savings uh, that they're entitled to. And as you've seen in your district, as I've heard going across the country, that has made a world of difference to a lot of working people. And at the same time, those employers who were part of that multi-employer pension fund also benefited because it allowed them to, uh, to continue to operate. It, it's prevented them from going into bankruptcy. Um, and, and so it was really a win-win. Um, and I appreciate the work that was done to make that happen. Yeah. Proud to be part of implementing that. Thank you. I yield back. The representative from Pennsylvania, Mr. Smucker, is organized. Thank, thank you.